Hi, my name is Rocky Robinson. I'm the driver of the Top One Ack Attack Motorcycle Streamliner, which is currently the world's fastest motorcycle. Um, come take a look. This bike is powered by two Suzuki Hayabusa motors. Um, they're turbocharged. We run a single turbo feeding both motors. The motors are 1300 cc's each, so 2600 cc's maximum, and we're producing approximately a thousand horsepower. Top speed on this bike so far, September 25th, we broke the world land speed record for motorcycles at 376 miles an hour. Uh, my exit speed was 394, so uh, just a click off of 400 miles an hour. Uh, probably the next big milestone in our sport is going to be the first to go 400 miles per hour. And, um, that's probably our, our next um, affair. Um, the bike is chain driven. It has two chains on it, one on each side. Um, and the chains are actually water cooled. We spray a mist of water inside the chain. And the reason for that is that the speeds we're going, it gets so hot that it actually boils the grease out of the chains. So the chains are water cooled on this machine. It takes parachutes to slow us down at the speeds we're going. Brakes would just burn up. These two cylinders here are for the parachutes. And these doors on the back are for to make the bike slippery through the air. But I actually have to open the doors to deploy the parachutes and get it slowed down. We're running um, just a high octane race gas. A lot of teams run methanol. We're running gas in this machine, and um, we don't feel the need for methanol yet because the horsepower we're making, it's, it doesn't seem to be an issue. The brakes on this bike are also water cooled. If you can see here, we have water going to the caliper and on the rotor. And the reason for that is this machine weighs about 2,000 pounds with me in it and getting it slowed down even after the parachutes are out. Um, it's asking a lot of these brakes. Um, we run in September, and um, the reason we run that late in the year is the Bonneville Salt Flats, where we compete at, is underwater every winter. And then when the water dries and evaporates, it leaves a flat, hard surface, and which is ideal for land speed racing. Usually, the courses we run on anywhere from 10 to 12 miles long. And I'll give you an example of the speed that we're going, um, when I ran my last run, it was an 11-mile course. I went from zero. My top speed was 401.7. Got back down to zero 11 miles later in less than three minutes. So uh, it's quite a ride. If you look inside here, you'll see these are the handlebars. And it's designed to ride like a motorcycle. It has handlebars. It has a hand clutch. It has a twist throttle over here. This is a shifting tree, and the reason for that, we're running two motors, there's two gearboxes. As I shift, both those lights have to light up in tandem, and if one's in one gear and the other engine's in another gear, it'll show it on there, and then I would have to abort the run because we will blow up the lower geared motor. If this happens, it'll just simply over rev it. The red switch here you see here is um, kind of the panic button, if you will. If I get in trouble and I know I'm going down, if I pop that switch and hit that toggle, it blows the doors open and deploys both shoes instantaneously. Otherwise, what I would normally do, this lever that you see on the right, is the parachute release. And I pull that two times and it releases the first chute. If need to use the second chute, I can pull it two more times and it'll release that. This is a tachometer and also a shift light. We have it set at 10,000 RPM. That's when I shift, that's optimum RPM range, so that when I get into the next gear, you know, it's not, it's not lugging the motor down. So there's a lot going on in here. You'll see there's a blue light here. That is for wheel spin. We have it set at about 8% wheel slip. And the ideal acceleration, you want a little bit of wheel slip. So I'm trying to keep that flickering. But if it ever stays on, you're spinning too much. And you're losing momentum because you're overspinning the tire. So a lot going on inside there. So your next goal is to break the 400 barrier? Well, we're talking about that now. I mean, we're the current um, record holders as it is. But that's the next milestone. No one's done that. Also. Um, the world record for cars is 417 miles an hour, and uh, we're not too far away from that. So um, we're still talking about what's in store next, but um, those are things to be considered.